Hey guys, welcome to video number seven. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about Earth's energy budget and how energy is transferred between different systems on the surface of the Earth. So recall in the last video, we talked about nuclear energy and radioactive decay. And today we're going to focus mostly on energy that's coming in from the sun and how that gets distributed through the Earth system. So why is this important? Well, for one thing, our lives are powered by the energy that we harvest from Earth. So understanding where it comes from and how it gets into different pieces of the Earth system is really important. Also, Earth's energy budget controls global temperature and, of course, global warming. So if you want to think about solutions to global warming or how to mitigate global warming, it's pretty important to understand the basics of energy transfer on Earth. So in this video, we'll review a little bit of vocabulary related to energy that you might already know. Then we'll talk about the concept of heat reservoirs. We'll talk about how energy is transferred between heat reservoirs by radiation. And then we'll finish by looking at how radiative transfer leads to the greenhouse effect, which is causing global warming. So getting started with some vocab. Um, so energy is the ability to do work. I think a lot of you have an intuitive sense for that. Heat is interesting. Heat is actually stored energy that causes molecules in, in any material to vibrate. So as an object gets hotter, it's storing more energy and its molecules are vibrating more vigorously. Temperature is just an arbitrary measure of heat. It's a scale that humans invented to quantify how hot an object is and therefore how much energy might be stored in it. Now, we can also think of energy as divided into potential energy and kinetic energy. So potential energy is a way to store energy. And good examples are chemical bonds or, of course, nuclear forces in an atom or gravity. If water is up at the top of a river, it has potential energy that it's going to release as it flows back down. And as energy is released, it gets converted from potential to kinetic energy. So that would include any object in motion, like water flowing downhill. But other examples of kinetic energy also include uh, radiant energy. Photons that are moving through space are carrying kinetic energy with them. Um, electrons that are moving through a wire also are carrying kinetic energy with them. So just to illustrate these ideas, um, how can we convert kinetic energy into heat energy? A good example of that is solar heating of this water, these water pipes on a rooftop. As photons come in from space, from the sun, carrying kinetic energy, they're absorbed by the black pipes and they're converted into heat energy, which then, of course, raises the temperature of that water so you can take a shower or do dishes. Okay, So heating of objects on the surface is an example of kinetic energy being converted into heat energy. Now, when we think about the Earth system, we have to think about how energy moves between three different heat reservoirs. And those include the biosphere, and the land surface, the atmosphere, and the hydrosphere, so basically oceans and lakes. So each of these stores a lot of heat energy, but they're also constantly sh transferring energy back and forth uh, as kinetic energy. Okay, And we're going to look more into this. But first, let's think about uh, how energy can be transferred. What are the three ways we can really transfer energy? One is by conduction. Okay, That's when you place one hot object next to another hot object, and they heat up. So an example is if you have a hot pot here over a fire, um, that heat is going to conduct into the handle and make it hot. And basically what's happening is molecules that are vibrating in the hotter part of the pot start to vibrate molecules in the handle and heat it by conduction. A second transfer mechanism is called convection. 
So that's when hotter or colder material is actually physically moved to a different place and then might cool or warm the surrounding material. So an example is uh, hot water on the bottom of the pan rises up and might start to warm up colder water at the top of the pan, and vice versa, that cold water sinks and cools water down here. So that's a convection cell, hotter or colder objects physically moving around. The third way is radiation. Radiation is what happens when a hot object actually emits electromagnetic radiation, or photons. And those photons can then be absorbed by neighboring materials. So an example of that is standing by a hot fire. Photons coming off that fire hit your body, they get absorbed, and they warm you by radiation. Now, radiation. Now, I want to go forward by zooming in on this third category of radiation, OK? Because that's really important in the Earth system. So to start out thinking about radiation in Earth systems, we need to recognize that all warm objects radiate energy. And they do that by spitting off photons, OK? And photons can either be short wavelength. An example of short wavelength is, is actually visible light. Uh, or they can be longer wavelength, like infrared uh, radiation. So if we look at the length scale here, infrared would be a little longer out here, and visible light would be a little bit shorter wavelength in here. Now it turns out that hot objects emit shorter wavelength radiation than cooler objects which tend to emit longer wavelength radiation. And that's predicted by this idea called the black body curve. And you can see those here, a bunch of different black body curves for objects of different temperatures. The x-axis is a wavelength of the photons that are being emitted. The y-axis is the rate of energy emission, or the intensity of the energy. And what you see here is that uh, hotter objects, like the sun at 5,700 Kelvin, tend to emit shorter wavelength light photons, like what we see in the visible spectrum here. Cooler objects, like Earth, tend to emit long wavelength radiation. For example, Earth is peaked out near 10 microns in the far infrared part of the spectrum. So hot objects emit short wavelengths. Cool objects emit long wavelengths. But it's also important to note that hotter objects in general emit more radiation. So the hotter something gets, the more it radiates and the more energy it kicks off. And that'll be important later. So that explains a bit about where energy is coming from in the, from the sun. Now let's think about what happens to that energy as it hits Earth's surface. It strikes the surface, and depending on the material that it hits, it can either be reflected or absorbed. If a photon gets reflected, no energy is transferred. It just goes right back out to space, for example. If the photon is absorbed, that energy is transferred. It causes molecular vibrations and it causes the object to heat up, just like in the example we saw earlier. Now, obviously, different types of materials are better or worse at reflecting. So water and snow are often pretty good at reflecting. Uh, brown or black things, like dirt or dark roofs, generally actually absorb more material. So for example, if we think about what really controls reflection of energy from Earth's surface, clouds are really important. They're white, and they reflect a lot. And snow is also really important, because it's white and reflects a lot. So the final part of this lecture is about how reflection and absorption gives rise to the greenhouse effect. And let's take a look at how this works. The sun is peaked in short wavelength energy. 
like visible photons, those come streaming down and they pass through the atmosphere without much trouble. But they're absorbed really quite well by the surface of Earth. And of course, that causes Earth to heat up. In response, as Earth heats up, it starts to emit its own radiative photons. But we just saw that because Earth is cooler, it emits long wavelength photons Okay, in red. So those would be infrared photons. Now what happens is that gases in the atmosphere are very good at absorbing infrared radiation. So that includes carbon dioxide, water, also methane. The result is that those gases warm up, and they actually re-radiate their own long wavelength radiation back down towards Earth. And so it ends up that a lot of this energy gets stuck in the Earth system, radiated up to the atmosphere, absorbed, and then radiated right back down to the surface, absorbed, radiated back. And basically, the atmosphere acts as a big blanket to absorb and trap infrared radiation. And of course, the more CO2 we put in the atmosphere, the more effective this blanket becomes, and the more the temperature of Earth rises. So take home points from this lecture. Um, heat is the storage of energy, and temperature is how we measure heat. Uh, Earth has three main heat reservoirs, which can exchange energy. All objects radiate and absorb energy by sending out photons or absorbing them. And this is a major way that energy gets exchanged. And the greenhouse effect arises because Earth emits mostly long wavelength radiation, which is really effectively absorbed by carbon dioxide and water vapor in the atmosphere, giving rise to global warming. So here's a single concept question. Uh, you can follow this link to take the quiz for this video. And our next video will look at Earth's heat reservoirs and its budget. Thanks.